Okay, so now we are uh, starting, uh, yes, continuing uh, lectures by Professor Diana. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we are starting lectures by Professor Diana. Now, turn to the opposite task where we did yesterday. You remember, we were talking about the, the living cycles. But yesterday, uh, in the living cycles, the, the topic was how to rule out that some dynamic process uh, as a good cycle. Uh, both tasks are uh, not easy for the general system at all. So I just uh, showed you uh, yesterday some most frequently used uh, methods uh, to try to rule out some uh, limit cycle from some dynamical system. And now we will see uh, the, how we do the, the opposite task. So uh, to establish that uh, there is a limit cycle that can occurs uh, all these for some, uh, for some dynamical system. One of the most important uh, results but concerning the existence of the limit cycle, but as you will see uh, at the end of this chapter, this is very important, um, more general sense, the result called Poincare Bendixson theorem. Uh, this is a theoretically very important result in the nonlinear design dynamics because due to uh, lack of Poincare Bandison theorem in the higher dimension than in plane, we are leads to the chaos theory. That's, that's generally uh, the, the point. So, um, in the contrast to Process of linearization and Hartman theorem, which I said can be applied in any dimension. So, no matter what's the dimension of your nonlinear system, you will always start with the linearization and the Hartman theorem holds in, uh, in any dimension. But uh, the application of Poincare Bandixson theorem is only in the plane. You don't have even in the uh, in the space. So what is generally the Poincare Bandixson theorem says? So if we have a um, region which is closely bounded subset of the plane, our vector field is as always continuously differentiable. Okay. Uh, uh, third and fourth is the most important. Assumptions. It says that uh, this region does not contain any fixed point. Okay, so inside the region there is no fixed point. And fourth, if there exists some trajectory that starts in that region, um, then it will remain in that uh, region for all the, the future time. Then either this is uh, itself a closed orbit or it's spiral uh, approach to some closed orbit. So either way, you surely have the closed orbit inside. Okay. Uh, so the first, uh, yeah, how we in practice so apply in this theorem. So the, the first three assumptions are quite easy. So the, the first two is we just construct some closely bounded uh, region in the plane, the vector field as we discussed earlier, it is usually continuously differentiable. We don't have uh, problems in that direction. You exclude the fixed point from that region. But the most tricky one is of course the point. So how to track your trajectory inside some region and how to be sure that uh, trajectory will not in the region. So if it starts there, it will remain in 
uh, that we do for all the future time. So that is basically uh, what um, should be done. So practice, we are constructing so-called the tracking region. So how to check that something is the trapping region? Also, first you, you have to uh, guess uh, or, or try to construct it, but how to uh, uh, conclude that so trapping region? So by plotting the vector fields on the boundary. Okay, that is one more reason why we at the beginning uh, I show you uh, how to uh, how to plot the, the vector fields, uh, of course, uh, by yourself but, uh, with use of some, some computer computer software. Uh, and uh, you also saw uh, yesterday, according to some examples, that we also use the, the vector field uh, directions in order to rule out the um, the closed orbit but also here in order to prove the existence of the, the closed orbit, also um, the vector field the directions are important. So you check on the boundary if the direction field point inward, okay? On the both boundaries, so the trajectories cannot leave that region, it's, it's quite clear, okay? Uh, so let's see on the, on the examples. So you remember our first two examples from the yesterday when I uh, plot you the, the, the limit cycle. It was a basic uh, examples, uh, probably in all the books. Uh, yesterday we concluded about the existence of the limit cycle by transforming the, the system to the power coordinates and then discuss the, the existence. So on the left, let me go bigger. This is the system. This is our limit cycle here. And the vector field is on the table. This is the table that we used uh, yesterday to establish the um, stability of the, the limit cycle, but it also helps in constructing the trapping region. Yeah, because now you know that between zero and one, the vector field is pointing to the right, so it's enough to take some cycle here, example with. Uh, radius of one half. Okay, that is what I plotted there. So you have this green uh, green field and inside this uh, edge to take one with radius bigger than, than one. So that is what I plotted here. As you see, the vector fields, the ones that the trajectory enters in this region from this side will always remain there. And also once the, the trajectory enters a uh, region from the uh, other boundary also remains trapped in this region. So this um, green ring is now the trapping region. And by application of Poincaré band Exxon theorem, we can conclude that there is a surely limit cycle inside. Uh, the other picture is for uh, that uh, second example when uh, we had the limit cycle. I just constructed it. So let's go on some example. I think that is my next example, which is not so obvious. So consider this nonlinear system and prove that or prove that it has a limit cycle. Of course, or we start with the fixed point. Uh, the origin is the only fixed point, and by linearization, we now conclude that it is unstable force. So 
I construct the rectangle. So X is between uh, minus one and one, and epsilon is between minus two and two. So this is the um, yeah, yeah, one. So on the left, I just plotted the uh, face portrait. So it is quite obvious that we have the limit cycle limit cycle here but let's prove it so let's consider the boundaries of uh, this rectangle so these lines and here is the calculus so let's take for example epsilon, um, epsilon two and uh, see what's the signs is usually what's the sign of x prime and epsilon prime so the sign of x prime is going to change here, but epsilon prime is less than zero. Okay, what's that mean? That epsilon prime is less than zero. So we are going down. Yeah, surely, but maybe x will be there or there. But anyway, uh, what's going on? Why oh, I lost it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so and X go either this direction or this. So anyway, the vector field points like this, okay? We are on epsilon equal two. So this boundary, so here, we either go there or there, but anyway, we vector field point in one. So the trajectory will now leave this region crossing this, and pretty much the similar, uh, okay? We are pretty much the single, similar calculation on each on the on the boundary. So on the left, as you see, we also calculated the vector points to here. From here also come to the conclusion by calculating the, the first derivatives uh, going here and from here. So definitely this rectangle is the trapping region. Yeah. So when the trajectory starts in this region, it will not leave it. But my question is, can we uh, apply the Poincaré Bendixson theorem? Not yet. Not yet. Why? Because there are fixed points inside the yeah. square. Because now you deal with a fourth assumption <laughs> nicely. We construct the trapping region. But the third assumption, remember, third and four is what's important. Not supposed to have a fixed point inside. Because if we have a fixed point inside, then uh, we cannot uh, uh, come to the conclusion that there is some attractor inside. Maybe the fixed point will attract the trajectories. But if there is no fixed point inside the region, then surely something will attract in that region the trajectories and that has to be nonlinear dynamics to the inside in the plane. In the plane. Okay. So what we do? But luckily, in this situation, our fixed point is unstable. Yeah. What that means? It means that we can construct a neighborhood like a small circle around the fixed point. And since it is unstable by the formal mathematical definition by, by the intuition, what means the unstable fixed point? That the trajectory which starts close to the fixed point will leave the neighborhood after some time because it is unstable. The small region, like the circle around the fixed point, we are sure 
by the definition of the stability, the trajectory will leave that neighborhood, enter into the now boundary region, which this is yellow one, yeah, without that circle, which is now the trapping region on which we can apply the Poincaré van der theorem and conclude that there is inside the uh, limit cycle. Yeah, clear? That is what. Of, of course, in the application, usually, um, I usually have the par parameters. Uh, and uh, usually, the stability of the fixed point depends on that parameter. So, if you want to prove that for some uh, parameters there is a limit cycle, then first you have to assure that your uh, fixed point inside is unstable. So, to repair the trajectory, and then to construct the, the trapping region. Because if uh, the uh, remember yesterday at the end, uh, yes, remember, I told you, I skipped this part uh, due to lack of time, that uh, by the index theory, uh, come to one very important conclusion that uh, the closed orbitary must encycle at least to one fixed point. Okay? So, the traffic region and the inside cycle always have a fixed point inside, but that fixed point has to be unstable. Yeah? To repel the region, you construct uh, the, the small circle, and then you construct the traffic region on which uh, boundary the trajectories, uh, the, the vector fields come to, uh, come to work. Yeah? But, uh, why should it be unstable? This is like Unstable. Why? Why should it be unstable? In the earlier example, it's not because you have like an additional unstable limit cycle. Uh, yes, but uh, I will I will come to that point. Yeah, we can just if you go backward time, then you can uh, make uh, make another. So, um, okay. For, first, to answer to this question, why the fixed point has to be unstable? Unstable. That's what you said. Yeah. And why so? Uh, the, the fixed point is because uh, if not, then you cannot make that boundary. No, that's possible. Of course, you can make an, a, another, but in this case, I, it's, yes. yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Because the limit cycle is uh, stable. Yeah, because it is uh, stable. Yeah. But uh, the, the another question, another, if we just reverse the time, we can apply it in a reverse time. What means that on the both boundary, the vector will be plot outward, yeah? But then we will have the unstable uh, limit cycle. Let's uh, come to, the, to, to that conclusion. Um, which I think, yeah, I just remember. So, yeah, so this is generally the, the, the situation in the previous example. You see, that's a larger limit cycle is unstable, yeah, you see, on the, the, the green uh, ring, the vector field points. Out, yeah. But this is the trapping region for unstable, unstable in the cycle. <laughs> the example. Um, yeah. Okay. So, Poincaré van Dijk's theorem, as I mentioned, is, is uh, very, very important. Uh, in the, the, the nonlinear dynamics. Because as I explained, it say that um, uh, the nonlinear dynamics is in play. You can say in the compare with the higher dimension, it's quite limited. So if the trajectory is trapped, the close bounded region, 
and uh, without any fixed point inside, uh, then the trajectory must approach the, the, the orbit, the, the limit cycle, that is what I say, but as I mentioned in the higher dimension, the Poincaré band no longer applies. And uh, we come to, to much more complicated uh, discussion and dynamics. So uh, the trajectory is, as uh, C may just wander around or uh, uh, without to some uh, either to a fixed point or to a close orbit. Of course, there has to be a tractor, but um, as you probably heard, there can be some so called strange tractors, like uh, so from, from that theory, starting the theory of fractals and, and so on. So I will um, just get to the idea. I don't know why here the Called introduction to house. Let's watch it together. Maybe there should be some sound. Mine. What is the sound? Uh, uh, somewhere where we have to check, uh, share some. Uh, I remember something. Like this. If you should hear it on this laptop. Yeah. I don't know why. Call them. I'm using this inside Zoom that we have to uh, check this uh, option. Oh, 
Or maybe it's <laughs> when we stop sharing everything books uh, at the bottom. Uh, okay, maybe it's on the computer. I don't know if it's on the
That's the, the, the basic idea about what bifurcation is, because in the application, of course, you have the mode of, yeah. I, I think that really, I don't know much about the energy. For example, in the in the Lorentz system, <coughs> that the divergence of the vector field is constant and always negative. Yes. So when you are in that factor, you also are dissipating energy. Well, I think that energy. Uh, for in the decay. Uh, you, you fall into a bad factor and you always lose energy. I think you, you have a space depending on the coefficient of friction. So once you enter when you start the limit cycle, you're conserving the energy. So you somehow, but, but in the energy is, while getting close to the limit cycle, but you dissipate less and less energy because you come to the limit cycle. Yeah, yeah, because as you say, in the limit cycle, you keep going around. So you can not dissipate energy. No, but you have a, a divergent even on the zero constant in every place of the space. In the Lorentz system, for example. When you are in that tractor, maybe you are compensating, I don't know. Yeah. You are yeah. always look. But the, the divergence is constant. So you are you are losing yeah. energy at a constant rate. Yeah. Um, minus V. I don't know it. Always for the Lorentz system, it's always like that. I don't know for another system. The Lorentz system is also familiar. Also interesting from the mathematical point of view, so we are familiar with it. But I'm not sure between each dynamical system. It's, yeah. We don't we'll see it because we are for training or like only seeing one part system, but yes. <laughs> no, I think that yeah. So Okay, we have now the, the non-linear system with part. Okay. This here for the beginner, the it's one dimensional parameter, but also we have during the theory of bifurcation and two parametric bifurcation and so on and so on. Of course, uh, for uh, the beginning, I uh, decided just to show you the, the global idea what the bifurcation is. In uh, for uh, very basic in each textbook, uh, the examples of the bifurcation. So, what is the bifurcation? Bifurcation is simply if we change the parameter and come to some what we call the critical value, then the dynamical of system will be radically changed. What that means? That means that two systems will no longer be what we call the topological equivalent, okay? So we will have the change either in the number of the fixed points, okay? Maybe the fixed point will disappear or we will have more fixed points. Yeah, this is one. Then uh, 
there might be the equal number of the fixed point that they will change the stability. Yeah, so maybe we have one, uh, two stable fixed point, but one will become the unstable fixed point, or we have uh, one stable, one stable, yes, that is uh, what we gave. So the change in the number or either the stability of the fixed point of course, a radically change the dynamic of uh, the system. If it is happening from uh, some values of the parameter, we call it verification. Also, there is a change in uh, uh, existence of the limit cycle. Yeah, so it uh, can be that the system has a limit cycle, then the limit cycle disappear or uh, the limit cycle appear uh, after some while of uh, the, the, the parameter uh, that we call the um, that we call the, the bifurcation critical uh, critical line. So uh, I will represent you uh, three uh, first three basic bifurcation concerning the number of the fixed points and either their stability. Uh, cell node bifurcation is uh, the most typical in which equilibrium are destroyed or created. It's also known as the fault bifurcation and the typical, what we call the, the canonical uh, normal form of the saddle node bifurcation is the nonlinear system of this form. So, what is what are the fixed points of the the system? Obviously, epsilon zero, but depending on me, yeah, x square x square is me. So, if me is negative, then we will obviously not have any fixed point. Yeah, if m is zero, we have only one fixed point. Yeah, and if M is um, um, greater than zero, yeah, we will have two solutions of this equation. So definitely the number of the fixed point depending on the parameter. So when B is negative, no fixed point, and the flow is from the right to the left, Okay, here you have the face portrait in all three, in all three cases. On the left, me is minus two so, or negative. In the middle, uh, me is zero. And on the right, uh, me is uh, greater than zero. So we have, uh, it is not seen very well because of this color, but there is one fixed point. Okay, it's a saddle, obviously, and there is, another fixed point now. It's always symmetric fixed point according to the pseudo axis. This is obviously the node, yeah? This is uh, the node now. Now we have uh, two fixed points. But uh, what is interesting uh, in the case when uh, me is zero, we have only one fixed point at the origin and it is non-hyperbolic. So you remember, I told you that uh, I will talk about that case. So we said that if by the linearization, we have a hyperbolic fixed point, then we can conclude about the dynamics in uh, nonlinear system by the dynamics of the uh, linear system. But if the fixed point is uh, non-hyperbolic, then we can not come to the conclusion. And yesterday we see the situation about the center, which is uh, one example of the non-hyperbolic fixed point, which has uh, complex Aiken values with the real part zero. But we haven't still considered the cases when there is uh, one Aiken value, which is zero, and this uh, comes to uh, the situation when we have a bifurcation. So, here we uh, have the fixed point, which is non-hyperbolic. You see that one um, eigenvalue is zero, another eigenvalue is minus one. So by the linearization, we cannot 
say anything about the, the dynamics inside of this, but throughout this bifurcation, uh, of course, we have. So in the case means greater than zero, we have two symmetric fixed point, and by the linearization and usual technique, um, we either plot eigenvalues. Uh, of course, here you already have a diagonalized, so canonical form. Yeah, so you know the uh, eigenvalues. This is the numbers on the the main diagonal, so you don't have to calculate almost uh, anything. So one fixed point is a stable node, and another fixed point um, is a saddle point. So the saddle node of bifurcation, considering the number of fixed points, if m is negative, no. If uh, m is 0 to 1, 1, not hyperbolic fixed point. And uh, when the uh, parameter gets uh, positive, we have two fixed points, one stable and one unstable uh, fixed point. A usual way to uh, show the bifurcation is throughout the bifurcation diagram. What is bifurcation diagram? So it is plot in um, me, you, or x plane. Okay. You just plot this. Um, a normal form, so the first equation, graph, and just plot the, the, the vector field. And it is a usual way to denote the stable um, part uh, with this and unstable part with dashed line. Yeah. So here we have when means no fixed point. Okay. As we increase, now we have one fixed point. This is the, the vector field of uh, this. And uh, here, obviously, approach to so this part is a stable fixed point. Across, we have one fixed point which is stable and another fixed point which is unstable. So this is um, the, the best way to, uh, to show. The, another type is a transcritical bifurcation. Now, first equation is also the um, second order polynomial, but with x next to me. What is now the situation? This equation, yeah, always have roots, yeah, x1 and the other is x me, yeah. So now we will always have two fixed points. Okay, epsilon is zero and x is either zero or, or, or me. So in transcritical bifurcation, there is no change in the number of the fixed points. But it's will be changing their stability. Okay. Uh, when v is less than zero, we have two fixed points. One is origin and another is, and by the linearization, we show that eigenvalues are uh, both negative. So this is table note. Yeah, so both eigenvalues are real and negative. We have the stable note. And the other fixed point, now we have one eigenvalue which is positive, another is negative, so settle. Yeah, one positive, one negative. So we have two uh, fixed points, one is stable, one is unstable. When me is uh, zero, obviously we have only uh, one. Again, at the bifurcation value, which is critical, we have non-hyperbolic fixed points. So the bifurcation uh, at, the, at the critical value always happen in non-hyperbolic. Fix, uh, fix points. Um, when uh, me is uh, great than uh, zero, now the origin became the saddle. Okay. So the origin is always the fixed point. Okay. First it was uh, stable, 
after the bifurcation, the origin becomes unstable. So the saddle point, but another fixed point appear on the right, and it is now a stable known by the visualization. <clears throat> there are the face portraits. Firstly, yeah, we have saddle. We have the origin, which is the stable node. As we enlarge, these two points are close, 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 then become one. Yeah, they approach to each other as we increase the parameter. This is obvious because these coordinates depend on the parameter. Yeah, so as we increase parameter, these two fixed points are closer and closer and closer, become one. That point, the origin changed the stability, so it is no more stable fixed point. Trajectories are no more. It becomes the saddle, but another attractor or another fixed point appear, which will now attract the, the trajectories, and we uh, have another uh, another um, a stable, uh, stable, stable fix, uh, fixed point. So uh, this. Uh, uh, this bifurcation is the only considered not in the change of the number of the fixed points, but obviously in the stability of the, of the, of the fix, uh, fixed point. Uh, okay, this is the, the conclusion about the transcritical bifurcation. Uh, the origin is stable. We have another fixed point, which is a saddle at me. That's two fixed points. Um, uh, course, so uh, joined it and uh, became a non-hyperbolic fix, uh, fixed point. And after uh, we further increase the, the parameter, the origin became uh, unstable, so saddle point and another fixed point appear. So, okay, this is the bifurcation diagram. Here, we plot um this is uh, the the origin so u equal to zero yeah at first and this is the line u equal to one so these two lines okay so here the left so when me is negative the origin is stable so this is the stable part but another fixed point which lies on this uh, this line it is unstable. Okay, clear. Yeah. When we increase, what's going on? The origin become unstable, so we now have the dash lines. Yeah. And another fixed point, which is on this line, so me equal to u, become the stable. The stable line. Uh, <coughs> of course. The transcritical bifurcation is in each of uh, these four cases. Not necessarily the normal form be like this. Okay. We also can minus here or plus here or plus here, uh, minus here. So uh, all the combination um, pretty much uh, gives the, the, the same dynamics, but Maybe uh, before the critical value as here, for example, the only difference is that now for a negative uh, parameter, the origin is unstable, then becomes uh, the, the, the stable one, the discussion and the dynamics is pretty much um, the same. Um, yeah, you have here the next. The next is. Fork, I think that I pronounce it, uh, pronounce it correctly. Um, okay, the normal form is this. Now we have minus uh, me x minus x squared. So on cubic. What will go on here? So how many solution we have? 
here, how many roots, real roots we have here. X one always, but the other two also depend on the, on the sign of me. Yeah. So zero is always the solution, but the other two depends on the sign of me. So we will either have one or three. Yeah. So when B is less than zero, there is only one fixed point at the origin. And by the linearization, we come to the conclusion that it is the stable node. So we have two negative eigenvalues. In the case means zero, again, the situation is the same. So we have non-hyperbolic fixed point origin, but with, while increasing further the parameter and it becomes positive, now two more fixed points appear. Yeah. Again, symmetric according to the, um, to the origin and by the linearization now for um, the origin, one positive, one negative, so settle. And for other two uh, fixed point, the eigenvalues are both negative. So we have now two stable nodes. Okay, so supercritical work bifurcation, for me negative only one and stable origin fixed point. Origin is still fixed point for the critical value, but non-hyperbolic. And when me become positive, origin becomes unstable, but two other stable fixed points appear. This is a stable nodes. So this is uh, the bifurcation diagram on the left. Okay. We have the stable fixed point here. So this is the uh, uh, u equal um, zero and the parabola. When v is positive, the origin is unstable, dash line, and this two is over there. But now we change in the normal form here, this sign. We have another type of bifurcation. Why it is so radically different here? So the uh, discussion is pretty much the same as before, okay? But now, when me is negative, the origin will be stable and we will have two unstable fixed points. When me is zero, the origin is again non hyperbolic fixed point. But if we increase me after the bifurcation value, two unstable fixed points disappear, more exist and only stay one unstable fixed point. So can you tell me why do you think that this is radically different than the previous case? Can you see? There is, there is always, always one, always one. Here we have always one, now three. For that, we have three after the bifurcation value, only one. In that sense, it doesn't make any difference. Just that before the bifurcation, you have to say that. What is the situation when we have only one? On the left, that only one is stable. Yeah, 
But on the right, when we have only one attractor, only one fixed point, it's unstable. Yeah? That's the main difference. We no longer have anything stable in the system after the bifurcation value. So the system, which was for some values of the parameter stable, has at least one fixed point which will attract the, the trajectories. Now, after the bifurcation value is increased, we have no longer anything stable. Yeah? We no, don't have any stable fix, fix point. That is uh, pretty much uh, radical change in the, in the behavior of the, of the trajectories. And you can see here also the, the face portrait, no cases. Obviously here you have three fixed points. Yeah, you know, settle, settle, note, yeah, the stable. No, you have also for me zero, the cell point, and the uh, great. Now, the origin is the only fixed point, but as you see, it is a settle point, so unstable fixed uh, fix point. <laughs> Wherever you, um, the, the only fixed point is unstable. So whatever the initial value for this system is go, the uh, solution will tend to infinity. They will not approach any, uh, any finite, uh, finite value uh, through, throughout the, the time. Um, okay. Uh, this was uh, so-called the, the, the normal form of, of, uh, of all bifurcation, as you see, according to the, to the techniques that we um, learned before, it is uh, very, very simple to analyze this normal form. It's no, no problem, it's simpler than, than some examples, than some examples before. But of course, the, the question is when you some system which is not in a normal form it's arbitrary function is there a way to see this going to um, occur some bifurcation and uh, which one well it's a matter of uh, not a very pleasant <laughs> calculation uh, but with uh, of course using the computer uh, you even have uh, some uh, software which uh, automatically do that. Uh, of course, you can uh, you can do that. So for arbitrary nonlinear system, so for some function f one f two, according you you have to calculate the partial derivatives of um, of this function. Okay, so. The Jacobian matrix is, uh, let's say, uh, first capital D derivative of this vector field, but we also um, define this expression. So this is the vector field of the second partial derivatives. Yeah, so the values, um, and this is with the third order uh, derivatives. And what we have to do uh, in order to apply the calculation, we have to, uh, we need uh, eigenvector, but the one corresponding to the lambda zero, so to the eigenvalue lambda and the zero. So, okay, the first uh, assumption is, of course, this is the fixed point. Yeah, at this fixed point, we have the bifurcation. The second assumption is, as you see in all examples, when mi is zero, yeah, at the bifurcation value, as I told, the origin was non-hyperbolic fixed point. 
we want eigenvalue zero. This is necessary. First condition that has to be um, checked in order to have the bifurcation. Because if the uh, fixed point is uh, hyperbolic, you will not have a problem by the linearization. You will find the half in theorem and everything is finished. Uh, so after that, you calculate the eigenvector v corresponding to the zero eigenvalue, and with the w, uh, w uh, the eigenvector corresponding to the transform matrix A, which of course again has uh, eigenvalue zero. And after that. Calculation. So you multiply W with the vector field partial derivatives according to the parameter. Yeah. This is uh, different from zero. And if the so this is the, the vector field, this is the vector, the scalar value. If this is different from zero, a saddle node bifurcation occurs in this fixed point for the bifurcation value and zero. If this first value is zero, then you check further. This is different from zero. This is different from zero. This is the Jacobian now of the vector field derivative according to the parameter now. So if these two values are different from zero, we have transcritical bifurcation. And uh, in the third case, if uh, the first one is uh, zero, but the third one is also zero, we have to check these two have to be different from zero. And in this case, we have the uh, work uh, bifurcation at the, the fixed point. So here you have, uh, I gave you one, uh, one example, just maybe the most important steps, just arbitrary systems, system, okay. What you first check, of course, the origin is the fixed point. Yeah. You calculate the Jacobian matrix and how you determine the critical value. So, yeah, but. Yeah. Yes, but that means that. Determinant is, yeah, this is zero, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you plot the, the determinant of uh, of this zero. Now you have two solutions, and I consider here, for example, the bifurcation. But I think that also for uh, the other bifurcation value, you also have. Uh, what was their transcritical bifurcation, if I remember? Yeah, the transcritical bifurcation. So next, you fixed that bifurcation value. And now you uh, calculate the eigenvector yeah, of this matrix and transpose matrix. And after that, uh, just calculate the partial derivatives of this function. Of course, for, for all the time, uh, the bifurcation value is fixed. From all the further calculation, you took me in the, the system and calculate the partial derivatives at the fixed point. Uh, of course, I, I said that the algebraic point of view is, is not pleasant, but the computer is um, it's no, no problem. And here is, for example, the face portraits. Yeah. We have the transcritical bifurcation. We have two 
fixed point. Uh, I consider the, the bifurcation for uh, me equal to one. Yeah, This is for less than bifurcation value. We have a two fixed point, one, uh, the, the origin is uh, stable. Yeah, the stable, but oh. here the focus, okay? In the normal form, it is a node, but we have now the, the arbitrary system. The other is unstable. It's a saddle point. It will close, 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 close. And after the bifurcation value, uh, the, um, uh, we have here, and this is obviously the, the node, unstable, unstable node. Uh, in, uh, in, the other, in the other case, but anyway, we have a two fixed point, just um, different, different stability. And uh, the bifurcation that uh, considering existence, appearance, or disappearance of the limit cycle uh, is called the, the Hopf bifurcation. So I'm drawing a Hopf bifurcation. About Oops. Here we also have supercritical and subcritical. So as in it will be uh, different. Boring. Um, let's look at the, 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 the normal form, it will be more easier. So I put the system in a usual form, but this is also called the normal form of the Hopf before bifurcation. But in order to analyze the system, as you know, the previous example, and we wanted to do that uh, and want uh, discussion about the limit cycle transformed to the polar coordinate. So when we do the transformation again, we obtain a very, very simple uh, system of. Uh, differential equation, uncoupled, the uh, first equation for R and the other for R. So now it is like the pitchfork uh, bifurcation for uh, fixed points. Yeah, the same normal, same normal form. So R is uh, zero corresponding to the origin. Yeah, so the origin will always exist. Okay. But depending on me, yeah, r quadrat uh, r square is uh, me. So if me is positive, you will have two solutions. So two uh, of course, one with the positive is a limit cycle. But if uh, me is negative, you will not have any limit cycle uh, here. And there is. portrait system so when me is negative the fixed point is a stable stable focus for zero still a stable focus but as we increase I thought it uh, me too because for uh, as me increase the the radius of the limit cycle also is supposed because the, uh, the equation for the limit cycle is r is equal uh, the square root of me. So with increasing me, the limit cycle radius increase. So I plot it for, for two in order to be obvious, uh, to, 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 to have a good picture. Uh, yes. um, so for, for me, for me too. Yeah, but uh, the the before bifurcation uh, for the system in the polar coordinates. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the same. Yeah. So, but now that uh, fixed points uh, are actually the the limit cycle, uh, except that of course the limit cycle cannot be R equal minus square root because there is a distance; it, it has to be uh, positive. Yeah. So only one, no, not not two, like in pitchfork bifurcation, obviously. Yeah, because uh, R is uh, distance. Yeah, 
that is why only only one actually. Yes. Yes, the cyclone, then we have this uh, stable point. Yes, stable yeah, point. also the bifurcation that, that, yeah, yeah, the stable. Yeah, you can also uh, plot the stability of the limit cycle. That's what you are. Yeah? Yes, like if it needs uh, yes. a diameter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you see, now the, the, the origin become unstable. Unstable focus, repelling uh, the trajectories, but there exists a limit cycle, and obviously, limit cycle is stable. So the trajectories, both from uh, outside and from uh, the inside, will approach the, the, the limit cycle. So, come to the conclusion that the stable limit cycle appear. Uh, the calculation is uh, as we did it uh, before. You just uh, determine the sign of uh, first derivative, positive, positive here. So we have the, the stable, the stable in the cycle, uh, in the cycle here. So in the, the other case, so this is the bifurcation theorem on the left. So when we is less than zero on the origin, okay. Now the parabola, but we plot only parabola for the uh, positive values of r. The distance. Now the origin become unstable, dashed line, and we have the limit cycle, which as uh, the parameter increase the radius of the limit cycle. Increasing and become larger and uh, larger. So this is um, supercritical half bifurcation, uh, and very similar. We have we have a subcritical half bifurcation, but as in the um, uh, case of the Pitchfork bifurcation, also quite radical. Now. We have the origin, which is the stable, but the limit cycle around that origin is unstable. As me increasing, so what's going on here? The radius is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, approaching the fixed point. Then the radius, so the, have only one fixed point, and the limit cycle is. And that's me increasing, but the origin becomes unstable. After the bifurcation value, as in subcritical uh, pitchfork, now we also don't have any attractors in the system, and also only one unstable fixed point in the, in the system. Uh, of, uh, anymore. So this is the. Uh, yeah. You know the same kind of transitions uh, in the high dimensional uh, point, transition of electrons. Um, uh, some switches. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. There, there is uh, and another type of of uh, bifurcation also, but the the bifurcation of course can occur in any dimension. So I just uh, here, but. Uh, uh, represented you when the first equation is one dimensional, yeah, but you can have uh, the, the, the same. Of course, the, the calculation in the, the, the theorem that I will do is a little bit different to uh, establish uh, the, the whole bifurcation, yeah, in the, in the higher dimension. But uh, what is actually uh, the, the, the situation? Um, uh, how to explain this? Uh, this so, uh, any system that uh, uh, occurs throughout uh, any of the previous bifurcation or the half bifurcation can be reduced to the normal form. 
after some transformation. That is the point. That is why we first do this normal form and we call it normal form. Okay. So if you have arbitrary system and if you uh, see that it satisfies condition for some bifurcation, there the transformation of the function or the time uh, um, uh, dependent value. So that put the system in the normal form. And after that, you discuss uh, this one. That is how the, the things are, are done. And uh, in the higher dimension, uh, the, there is a hop for bifurcation. But for example, if you have the four dimensional, of course, because the hop bifurcation occurs only when the origin is the center. Yeah. Now the non-hyperbolic fixed point, yeah, but with the real power to zero. Previous uh, bifurcation was also in a non-hyperbolic fixed point, but one real algebra. Okay. So if you, for example, I have the four-dimensional system, yeah. The hop bifurcation always occur in the manifolds, which is called center manifolds, and which uh, correspond to the uh, pure imaginary, uh, pure imaginary uh, value. So the other two dimensions you can just ignore. Yeah, after putting the system in the normal form, and you just uh, uh, discuss uh, the system in the normal form in which the first two equations then will be uncoupled and compare with the rest of the system. Yeah? So you can just ignore uh, the equation third and fourth and discuss the equation. So pretty much the, the uh, calculation will be, of course, a little bit different, but in the general condition. Um, okay, yeah, we have the now uh, unstable limit cycle. Do you see? Yes, the origin is a stable. Bifurcation value, the origin becomes unstable, fixed point, and after the bifurcation, only the, so the limit cycle disappears, and we have only unstable. Uh, unstable fixed point. Um, remember from yesterday, we had a problem with the center. And we showed that for some system center is stable. The whole of bifurcation occur when the center of the linearism system, the bifurcation value become false. If it stays center of the nonlinear system, you don't have bifurcation because you have already the closed trajectories around. It doesn't disappear. Am I clear? Yeah. So the bifurcation value by the linearization, you will come to the conclusion that the fixed point is the center. That it is a linear center. Yeah. But actually, as you see on the vector field plot, it is a non-linear box. Not the center. So this is everything example from the yesterday when I said that the center can remain the center as in the Hamiltonian system, but the linear center can actually be the nonlinear focus. That's uh, the point which is uh, critical uh, and when uh, usually the hot bifurcation occurs. In the system, it of course uh, changing the the, the the appropriate uh, the appropriate parameter, and um, this is also sometimes a uh, good way to show the existence of the limit cycle. Yeah? When you notice something like this, you just put the parameter inside and show that. Or this value parameters exist. Uh -huh. and so uh, sometimes, if uh, you cannot construct the trapping region, which we see it is not so uh, so easy, uh, you can um, come to the conclusion that there is a limit cycle throughout hop bifurcation in, uh, in the system. 
Um, yeah, again, I, I, I put uh, the, the calculation is um, calculation is uh, now it's technique. Uh, calculation is not pleasant at all, but there is now the, using the, the computer, uh, everything uh, can be done. So again, the question, considering arbitrary systems, so not in a normal form, again, two-dimensional systems. So there is a well-famous Hopf bifurcation theorem, giving the conditions that some system occurs the hot bifurcation. First condition, the origin is the fixed point, but for the bifurcation value, it is a center of the linear system. So have purely imaginary eigenvalues. Okay, that is the first condition that has to be uh, satisfied. If further, um, real part of the bifurcation value is positive, it means, and the real part is zero, this means that we have a pair of pure imaginary eigenvalues. Now the eigenvalues crossing uh, the uh, the pool line with uh, this target. So the derivative of the real part of for me for the bifurcation value is different from, uh, from zero. And the third task, which is more uh, most difficult, at least for calculation, is to calculate the so-called first step one of uh, number uh, you have for uh, Two parametric bifurcation and so on, you then uh, calculated also the second uh, the pool of uh, number. And so this on. is the variable of exponents? No. No. no, 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 just, uh, just uh, another type. Yeah. Oh, okay. There is too much in the mathematics called the Yapunu mm. <laughs> stability, Yapunu function, Yapunu exponent, Yapunu coefficient. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, usually mixed up, but uh, no, um, it has to be different from zero. Uh, why? Uh, just because uh, the, the the main reason is uh, I talked a, a couple of minutes ago. So uh, if you want to uh, change uh, the coordinates and put the initial system in the normal form for the Hopf bifurcation. So in the calculation, all this, uh, all this uh, condition uh, pretty much uh, uh, appear and lead to uh, in the way to, to prove the Hopf bifurcation theorem. It is, it is obvious that uh, it, has to be, it has to be satisfied. Uh, and then according, because these two numbers has to be zero, okay? according to the sign of these two numbers, is it less, or, uh, less than zero than the zero, everything is described here. So it just depends if we're going to have the subcritical or subcritical value, and is it going to happen when we increase the mean or we decrease uh, the uh, so the conclusion is here. So if this uh, L delta uh, is uh, greater than uh, is less than zero, uh, the unique cycle appears as me increase. This is positive. It appears when me decreases from the, the bifurcation value. Uh, the stability of the fixed point is determined with delta. So if delta is less than zero, it is stable for great on uh, then bifurcation unstable. This is the contrary. And always 
the limit cycle and the fixed point has a difference to build. So if the fixed point is uh, unstable, the limit cycle around is stable. If the limit cycle around is, if the fixed point is uh, stable, the uh, limit cycle around will be, will be unstable. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the, the conclusion. And also you have here, okay, calculation and getting it here. So you see, if you put the system in the, okay, what's the steps? Just two questions, uh, just two, two sentences more. First, you translate the fixed point to the origin. That's the first step. The other step to put it in a canonical form. That is always done. And after that, your system becomes like this, okay? The matrix of the system is, you see, from this system, the matrix of the system is zero, zero, minus beta, beta. Which means that we have a center, yeah? Real eigenvalues, real part is zero, yeah? So you will always put the system in this form if the hypotrification occurs. And after that, you just plot the partial derivatives in this form. Uh, mostly uh, uh, up to the third order, yeah? Apply this formula. Of course, all the values are in the origin, yeah, as, as the fixed point. So X and uh, I is, is equal to, to zero. And this is the reference number. Or um, if you already have, um, I mean, the, the, the system, which is uh, the functions are expressed uh, using the, the Taylor expansion so in the polynomial form, then you can calculate it in, in this, uh, this way. So, okay, uh, this is the, you have the system, this is the linear part, yeah? and this is from the second, yeah? Uh, second degree polynomial, third degree polynomial. And in order to calculate the Lyapunov coefficient, you uh, use the second and uh, the third order coefficient in the Taylor, Taylor expansion. And you have here the, the formula. So as I say, using the, uh, the computers, it's not, uh, it's not the problem to, to calculate the, the first definite coefficient. And of course, the computer software or uh, design for So, okay, I think I will, uh, I will stop, uh, stop it there. Um, any questions? This is two, two, two examples uh, we have the, the calculations. I don't know, also have some in the, in the, the, the exercises, but that's stop. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, is there any intuition to what the number of coefficients are or what they mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, quite obvious, as I said, so when uh, you start to transform your system in order to put it to the normal form, then it's obvious in, in some, uh, some point that this coefficient appears, uh, yeah. coefficient, and it has to be, uh, it has to be different from, from zero. Otherwise, you cannot put the original system that normal form that we discussed at the beginning, you know, of bifurcation. So the system will be um, in another form, another type of bifurcation. So, yeah. Yes, please. 
Bifurcation. This is the all this bifurcation is local. Yeah, but we have uh, and then it is the global bifurcation of the limit cycles. You can have two limit cycles. Yes. Um, how is it related to the function bifurcation? Um, I think not because the, you cannot decide just for. For up to you need uh, the, the further investigation of this. You just now know that there is one limit cycle but up uh, to uh, using uh, the first equivalent coefficient, or if uh, all the assumptions from the half bifurcation theorem are uh, verified, doesn't mean that there will be maybe two limit cycles. But there is another way. You have to continue with the investigation of, the, uh, of your system in order to, to see if there is a multiple uh, limit cycle. Maybe mm -hmm. more. Yeah? There is uh, examples of the half bifurcation. There is only one limit cycle of years. After some time, it fails one more. After some time, it fails one more, or they can just disappear. Just because this uh, will uh, happen uh, because of the rest of the dynamics. Yeah? Because, for example, I'll just show you uh, yeah, the, the good example. So let's, uh, let's imagine that. You have a limit cycle around this with the focus. But imagine that you have the saddle point also here. So that's why we call it the global bifurcation. It is not only uh, concerning this fixed point, but on that kind of bifurcation, uh, another fixed point has the influence. So imagine you have the saddle, then what will happen in some dynamical system? That limit cycle. Go large, 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 yeah, closing to the saddle. Then at what moment the saddle will attract and how many uh, the trajectories will appear? Yeah, you understand me? After some time, you increase the parameter, it will broke the homoclinic and nothing else. So, no homoclinic, no the, the limit cycle, no nothing. So, you can have the situation with two limit cycle, but probably some other fixed point which is uh, which appears in the dynamics will uh, influence uh, which influence that. But of course, you have uh, also the set, for example, saddle node bifurcation of the limit cycle. So the, the same as the saddle node bifurcation of the fixed point. So two fixed two, two cycles, which will they approach, approach, approach each other, become one, and then disappear both. That, that is what is called the saddle node bifurcation of the limit cycle. Of the limit cycle, yeah. Two limit cycle, yeah, here. These parameters, they are close, close, close. One, and then this. Just like saddle node bifurcation of the fixed point, you have two. They approach each other, there is one, and then everything disappears. 
This is everything for global dynamics. What is equal and present of global dynamics? What do you mean? So, how is it possible if it is given? Is it possible to conclude about the number of the cycle? Of course, the calculation is usually <laughs> not so pleasant, uh, especially if you have a lot of parameters like the equation dynamics, which I do. But uh, sometimes you can make it, sometimes not. But yes, there is everything pretty much can be calculated. So theoretically, we know what conditions has to be to put uh, the system in the form so that you have this application. But the question is. Are you going, of course, with the computer, you will plot the, the phase four charts and you will see that this is going to happen. Another point is uh, how to obtain the bifurcation value. And this is also possible. But to formally prove, not only by seeing uh, the phase four chart, but sometimes a lot of calculation. And The model is actually is for the lamp over the system. I started for the pattern formation. I don't identify. My query is what for a link cycle, it is mandatory to have the fixed point within the cycle. What would be the guarantee that this point would be the center? Because for, for the new cycle, this new cycle you would not get a part of the If it is center, then this is probably no, no, no. around around that because of it you will have uh, or how isolated close on. Only for the Amravaka system, you have a radius one inside. Then the center would be the fixed point. What is going to be the center part? For other system, what would be the guarantee to have the center as a fixed point? You only can have a factor of two because one couldn't call it. And in that sense, the closed orbit. But not the limit factor. Mm -hmm. I work on network, and from my experience, that you will have a limit factor. You have a center, you have orbit circling around, and you don't have, you have a, like a lot of limit centers. Like, like a like pendulum. In pendulum, you have a lot of, if you want limit centers. Uh, that, that is also uh, one way that I, that I missed. So you have, uh, according to the index theory, so index of all the fixed points except the saddle is plus one. And the addition of all the fixed points uh, inside the system cycle must be one. So also the limit cycle cannot surround the cell. So you can have the cell and uh, the, the center inside, it's also not. Really, really, I, I didn't do any, any, I haven't had any system on the limit cycle. As a summary, uh, I think that the, the summary I learned was that in a two-dimensional system, you can only have um, 
norm, uh, um, fixed points, limit cycles, orbital, tend to a limit cycle, or orbital that are what, from one point or for one, from one fixed point to another or to the same. In heterogeneous yes, okay. one tending to a limit cycle, unit cycle of fixed points. And then you need to that. Thank you very much for you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all of you. Nice questions, nice discussion. I hope you enjoy your stay in the niche. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to come to any point in your wish you all access for your future work for them. And if you come to questions concerning design policy, also please have a great day as a teacher. I can help with my basic knowledge of physics <laughs> and mathematical point of view. I will do my best. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.